you can't do great things alone. You have to have great relationships, great friends, great talented people that help you achieve through their good works. Business of Architecture, episode 313. Hello and welcome back, Architect Nation. My name is Enoch Sears, and this is the show where you'll discover tips, strategies, and secrets for growing a profitable, impactful, and fulfilling architecture practice. Today, you'll hear the remarkable story of a relatively new firm that has simply exploded from two people to over 20 people in the past couple of years. Right off the bat, they started with a $500 million, 800-room hotel and convention center in Fort Lauderdale, right off the bat, with no staff, quite a challenge. So they knew they had to grow quickly, and they had to do it the right way. Nunzio Mark DeSantis Architects is a firm that focuses exclusively on hotel and resort design. When I say design, I mean design. They team up with production-focused firms to complete the project so they can do what they do best, design the best experience and oversee the entire process. This episode is a crash course in growing a wildly successful architecture firm. If you've worked with me personally in my Dream Practice Accelerator, a lot of this will sound familiar to you. You'll recognize the things that we've worked with you on, like building a firm that moves beyond what you can do personally, how to get out of being the bottleneck, tracking key performance indicators, core values, how to create a culture where the whole is greater than the sum of the individuals, how to recognize the right people to hire for your firm, being an advisor instead of a vendor, and so much more. There's so much gold that Mark and Nunzio dropped in this episode. What's even more remarkable is that the founders of this firm are a father and son duo. Nunzio DeSantis previously was a managing partner of the firm HKS before he left that very successful and fulfilling career to start Nunzio Mark DeSantis Architects with his son, Mark Jacob DeSantis, who has a pedigree also from some of the world's leading design firms. If you'd like to discuss today's episode or get other free content about building a next generation practice, a practice that's built on a solid foundation that can survive 10, 15, 20 years, 50 years into the future, be sure to join the Business of Architecture Forum group on Facebook. You can just search Facebook for Business of Architecture Forum. You'll find it right on there. And with that, here is today's interview with Nunzio and Mark DeSantis. Mark and Nunzio, welcome to the Business of Architecture podcast. Hello. Hello out there. Here we are. Hey, Mark, tell us about Nunzio Mark DeSantis Architects. Well, Nunzio Mark DeSantis Architects is a partnership, a father-son partnership that is, at its very core focuses on excellent hotel and resort design around the world. We are uh, a small company that prides ourselves on being the experts in hotel and resort design, and that's what we've chosen to focus on, and we're very passionate about it. We like to deliver excellent product at a very high-touch um, and personal level to our, our clients and ultimately the guests at our hotels. So that's really the core of our, our values and our principles. And um, that's what we do here at NMDA. Thanks. And I'd like to ask each one of you individually what it is that you feel that you really bring to the table as a partner. And Nunzio, let's start with you. Well, I mean, I think, I think what we bring is balance, um, balance and expertise. Uh, I think so many architectural firms out there are built on the chassis of older owners, owners that have been through the, you know, the gauntlet of rising to the top. And, you know, and that brings expertise. But what I love about our firm is you've got this foundation of knowledge that myself and a, and a you know, a handful of more, uh, let's not call us mature or seasoned, but guys that have been around the block a great deal more. And what, what we're surrounded by youth, um, uh, so we're more relevant. We're so we're so much more today and forward looking rather than what we've done in the past and the places we've gone to. Yeah, foundationally that's important. But I really, really believe the essence is looking forward, built on the chassis of what you've seen in the past. So I, I, I do think that separates us from others. Is this kind of unabashed, courageous design desire to uh, deliver? product that is functional, relative, budget oriented, but extraordinary and unexpected. And that comes from a lot of the youth. And, you know, I applaud the young people led by Mark and it's, it's quite, it's a lot of fun to sit on the, 
you know, be the, the oldest guy in the room and see all these young guys kind of passionately and romantically have their moments. So it's uh, ahead of their time in most cases. I mean, where do you, where do you see people 27, 28, 29, 30 being principals of an international firm and having incredible personal touch with clients? Usually in most firms, you're sitting in the background or you're not attending. Here, we're, we're putting these young, talented people out front and letting them make a difference. And, and if I may add to that, um, you know, my dad's talent, Nunzio's talent um, and expertise is really rooted in, in years and years and years of focused design work in, in the hospitality space. And ultimately, that's where his value is, is um, so important to us as a company. And we really see him as kind of the, the man at the, at the head of the ship, the kind of the one leading us forward um, and teaching me down the way how to, to kind of take over the reins and do something that's really special. And um, I'm the one standing behind him learning every day, but also pushing him. I believe that together we push each other, but I, I have this idea and outward look um, for years and years to come. How do we advance things through technology? How do we advance things from a youthful perspective? What is the next generation going to want in life? That's so much different from what we have today. And where is the, ho- the hotel industry going to be in 10, 15, 20 years down the road? So we kind of do make this interesting duo that is always together coming up with something that's great. Yeah, and I, I want to add to that uh, every one of our projects, unlike with other firms, every single project Mark and I touch, influence, guide, and personally lead for the client. There aren't layers and layers and layers of people, and you don't find me in this notion of being in the business of architecture where it's now all about money and numbers. I believe we're in the people's business. Our craft is architecture. Our focus is guest experiential areas. And when you blend that all together with the youth and the technology and the social media and the, and just this ever changing world and needs of these young people makes us a very desirable and very uh, interesting group. Now, Nunzio, on that, you you left a, a long and successful career uh, at HKS. You were the director of HKS Hospitality Group and executive vice president there, among other things. I'd imagine that you left a pretty good, a pretty big gap when you left. I mean, how did you make the decision to leave that was a very solid, successful career and branch out and do something more entrepreneurial? Well, it's, it's hard. I mean, I was there 35 years and. If you can think of what the firm was 35 years ago and, uh, you know, over the tenure of me being a principal, when I became one of the owners at 33. What was it 10 years ago? If you don't mind me interrupting, what what was it 10 years ago? uh, uh, If you look back some 35, 15, 20 years ago, the firm when I started was 170 people. When I left, it was, it was, you know, in the realm of 1,315 to 1,400 people. So 29 offices, we had one when they started. So you can imagine the the celebration of leaving and the heartache because you're I've spent a lifetime helping build something that is really extraordinary. And along the way, that lifetime was built around association with wonderful people. You can't do great things alone. You have to have great relationships, great friends, great talented people that help you achieve through their good works. So. You know, one of the great things is we're we're a mile and a half away from HKS. Everybody in the city still calls me their great friend, and we just went to a wedding this weekend. So, I mean, the notion is that we're still all friends. We do compete, friendly c- compete, but, you know, um, you leave something like that behind, and you leave a piece of yourself behind. But what a great, you know, I mean, the spark of energy and the and, and all the things that, I became very comfortable. You become very comfortable when you have a machine like that is so significant as a firm that I left that that has everything. I mean, I came in the first day here and 
I was wondering why, who was going to make the coffee. I realized that was me. <laughs> and uh, I mean, that that's the lowest thing to really focus on. But the very first day, it was very, I mean, when I'd show up, I'd have a coffee pot. We'd have stuff on the table. Everything was there. I mean, that that's how big a change it was. Everything changed. So, I mean, Mark and I started when we were just two of us. I mean, today we're 30 people and uh, we are saying no to so many projects. Not no because they're not worthy. It's just that, you know, we are being very selective, aligning our goals and our aspirations, the desire of courageous projects, being able to find, be realized. And if you don't find yourself sitting at the table with the right owner, you know, the owner starts to define you rather than you define yourself through your craft. So uh, it was hard. It was hard to leave. It was the greatest thing I ever did. I, there were many times I thought maybe it wasn't the greatest, smartest move. Today, you know, some 30, 32 months later, whatever we are, it by far was the greatest move I've ever made. And I'm so proud of to, to say that I did that. Most people wouldn't do it. I had a ride to the end, you know, so. Uh, I'm glad. I'm glad we did this. I uh, I see that. I mean, most people wouldn't do it. I think you're right on that. And what do you think it is in your DNA, whatever it is, Nunzio, that that made you do this? Well, I think I'm more entrepreneurial than most big corporate people. I also, I, I I I love the art of design. When you get to be one of the four managing principles of a firm like that. You seldom have time to really engage with a project because you're pulled in so many different ways from accounting to HR to, you know, just on and on. All the, the you know, looking at revenue for offices, people, uh, different organizations within it. Uh, you know, you're, you're constantly evaluating to make sure that the ship and the barge, let's call it a barge, stays afloat and it's, and it's heading in the right direction. So uh, I lost my way. <laughs> from being why I got into architecture and, you know, and at some point, most people get there, they find themselves stuck. They have to earn a wage. They, they can't get out there and risk everything. I, on the other hand, because of the great fortune working for a firm like HCAS gave me a platform where, you know, financially I was, I was sound, super sound. So I didn't, I, 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 you know, I'm, a, I'm an unusual bird from that standpoint, and I just been glad that we had the opportunity, the wherewithal, the financial stability, and this incredible relationship with clients all over the, the the world. That immediately, the day we opened the pro the firm, we had serious work. Not, you know, most firms that open are grappling at every little store. Our, our first job was a $500 million, 800 room hotel in Fort Lauderdale. The first week we opened that is a project, any major of the biggest players out there in the hospitality would die to have. And that is built on the sheer trust of people knowing what a person means and their integrity. And a lot of these people have known Mark the entire time he was, he was being, you know, nurtured and brought along because he worked at HKS every summer and he went to work for Robert A.M. Stern in New York, he worked on some of the most fabulous projects. So the pedigree is there and it's, uh, it's, it's kind of fun. So I, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to be talking so much. That's great. Mark, what would you say is your perspective of the genesis of this idea? How did this come about? Hey, let's join up with my father and ask him to leave this wonderful position he has, or how did that play out? Well, you know, you, you kind of look back, everything has been a whirlwind for the past two and a half, two and three quarters years now. As you can imagine, the start of this firm has kind of been a little hectic and, and it's always good to, to take a step back and kind of look why and how you chose to come down this path. And, um, you know, when I started my, my architectural kind of professional career back when I was selecting my degree and I always had this, this notion, this vision, and this hope that someday I have the opportunity to work with my dad and do something great with him. And, you know, I, at first I, I kind of thought I might join him at his firm, but I kind of started going down my own path and 
you know, we, we always talk off and on about doing things together, but we were just, we just came back from a trip to Santa Fe. We were um, on a site visit for a brand new hotel that, that we're a part of designing. It's an auberge hotel called Bishop's Lodge. It's a historic hotel just outside of the historic downtown Santa Fe. And it's an incredible project. And um, I have been, had the great fortune of being a part of that project for the past two and three quarters years. And over this trip, we just saw some remarkable progress. We actually got to see the story coming to life, the magic being made. And, and at some point, I stopped and I looked at my dad and I said, I'm so proud to be a part of this with you and be doing something amazing together. And, um, and it, and it was, it was really a, a moment that I think we both cherished together. And, um, I think really at the, the crux of what we're doing, we'll kind of cut through everything and get to the heart of it. That's really, um, why I'm here. And I, I think why me and my dad decided to try to, to kind of build a legacy firm together. So, that's my perspective on things. And I, I couldn't be happier to be doing this with him. So that, that's, that's kind of where we're at. I, I can only imagine that father-son relationship dynamic. Look, let's face it. If you're not working together, it can be tough enough as it is, right? Potentially getting along with the parent, a son, that dynamic throwing in there, now running an architecture firm and different opinions about things, different styles about doing things. I'd like to just go back in time a bit to the father-son relationship that you had kind of growing up because I would have thought that, that Nunzio would have been pretty busy with his corporate career as an architect. What were kind of the key moments that you felt allowed you guys to actually have the kind of relationship where you can work together? It sounds like you guys have a great relationship. I'd like to know what's, what's the secret. Well, it, it, it's not all roses all the time. Um, it's been bumpy here and there, but ultimately what, what I'd like to say first is um, my dad is, is one of my heroes. He's someone I look up to. He's an incredible architect, and he's really the reason why I became an architect. Little do you know, my mother is also an architect, and she's not only a, prof a professional architect, but she's also an architect in my life. And um, they were both really wonderful parents. I remember growing up and driving around town, looking at houses together, looking at architecture, going visiting the new buildings that were opening up. I remember sitting in my dad's office. Um, drawing plans of our house, drawing plans of landscape and pool decks and hotels. And ultimately I just couldn't find myself doing anything else other than architecture. Architects are such passionate people and they love what they do. It's hard to um, choose a profession other than, than what makes architecture so wonderful. So I think it was, it, it was easy to follow, follow my dad in, in that kind of a way. Um, I don't know what my dad's about to say, but I hope it's only good things. Well, and I'd just like to preface well, whatever Nunzia is going to say. Also, if you could give us some insight on your, your philosophy as a father, I would imagine that it might be challenging to instill a love of the profession that you're doing. I mean, it's so easy to be overbearing. I'm a father myself, and sometimes when you push your kids in one direction, they kind of pull back the other, but it sounds like that wasn't the case here. Can you shed some light for us on that? Yeah, I mean, look, we, I am his father, and I will always be his father. He's going to be my son. Uh, with that, you know, I do things in a fatherly way. That doesn't mean that a fatherly way is right for a partnership. And that's one of the things I've enjoyed the most about this wonderful exercise we're going through. Whatever this uh, exploration we're going through, this is that I'm learning to find a way to understand what my actions mean to not an employee, but my son, who is my partner in a firm. It's a very different relationship. I could, I could do just about what I needed to do and do it the way I wanted to and really not have to answer to somebody below me. But with this relationship, my actions take a different meaning. They not only act as an employer, but 
I'm sure Mark reflects on it as to that's my dad. So I need to, uh, when he, when he is stern or strong with, you know, it affects how he feels about it too. Whereas in a typical work setting, it's not that way. So I've become more and more aware of this. It's made me a better man. It's made me a better architect. I think it's made me a much better uh, father. So every day's learning from that standpoint. This is a, this this has a, been a, a great road, but I, I have to say something. Uh, you know, my children, my son Mark, Emily, and my wife's an architect. I'm an architect, or my nephew's an architect. Both our children grew up in a family that was highly creative. Then it, you look at my extended family. My my sister's an artist. My other sister's a writer. I mean, it just goes on and on. So. We lean that way. We lean towards the creative, leaving your mark in a way that is, you know, truly yours. So, but how do you not fall in love? If you're going to be an architect, how do you not fall in love with creating places that make life better for other people? Hotels and resorts are, you know, an amazing small piece of architecture out there, but that's all we do. And to look at Bishop's Lodge, like Mark said, we are going to change people's lives for decades. We're going to we're going to create memories for children, grandparents, parents, honeymooners that will be with them forever. I can't think of many other buildings that architects do that really do that. You can go to a, go to a museum, and yes, and you leave. You don't go to a hospital and remember it, and so you don't go to an office. But a resort is very intimate. So I I understand why people fall in love with hospitality. And Mark does too. And we've enjoyed this ride. And it is, like you said, it's not rosy all the time. But if it were rosy all the time, we wouldn't be as good. Creative tension and ambitious tension, properly filtered and with the right mix in the right respect and the right integrity makes us very powerful. Right. That's my take on it. Absolutely. And I I think one more thing that, that really lends itself to making us, you know, easily able to work together is that I think our core values align very well with one another, partially because, you know, I was raised in a certain way, but but I, I have, we I have gone down my own path, my own journey for quite some time. And the core values that we, we hold at this firm very much align with one another and our visions. When we sat down to kind of come up with what this firm was going to be, our values, our ideas about culture, about what we wanted to deliver to the client and ultimately to the guests were very much aligned. So um, that helps tremendously. Mark, what would you say has been the most difficult part of the past two and three quarter years for you in terms of the firm? Well, there's a, the most difficult, that's um, that's a tough one to answer. There's been trials at every step along the way. Of course, we have um, been able to conquer all of those in kind of a diligent, swift type of manner, but all along the way, there's been challenges. I'd say the the single greatest challenge has been to form a team and nurture that team in a way that it aligns to our core values and create the culture that we want to create in our office. I think that's the, the biggest challenge that we have, have here. And I think it, it ultimately lends itself to, to what we're trying to do as a firm. And if you don't get that right, then you might as well just call it quits because if you don't, if you don't, if you can't lean on the team behind you, then, then you really have nothing to lean on. So that's what I think it has been the, the greatest challenge. I think we've made in the past two and three quarters years, tremendous strides. You know, I have 30 people. We love them like family, everybody that we have behind us. Um, we know all about their family, all about their daily lives. We sit down every Monday and kind of talk about how everyone is doing, how their family's doing, 
We want to hear about their life, their not only their work life, but their personal life, and make sure that that everyone is uh, that everyone is just doing generally well because we care for everybody at our office. And I think that's something that makes us extremely unique. It's something we're proud of. Nancy, what would you say would have been the most challenging part from your perspective? I see it a little different. I echo everything MJ said, Mark. And you always could hear me calling MJ. I refer to my son as Mark Jacob. That's his first and middle name. But uh, I think one of the things we could not prepare ourselves for was the degree of immediate success. We started the firm in June of 2017. The first week in June 2007, we had a $500 million convention center hotel with no staff. You know, that, that is in itself a daunting hurdle to be facing. And that kept coming. So we had to bring on people quickly. We had to somehow establish a level of excellence that we would require for everybody. And everybody had to be on board. There was no, there was no onboarding or gestation. We were, we were in business day one. And yes, the people thing, hiring the right people, culture, all those things are extreme, are ongoing challenges for us. But that's the same challenge that a big, well-established firm would have how you manage culture and all those kinds of things. But it was the instantaneous, overwhelming success when we weren't probably prepared or staffed appropriately for. So Mark and I had to work tremendously and we still work hard. Okay. That there's no such thing as a 40 hour week. But there was no such thing as an 80-hour week when we started because if we weren't going to do it and do it right, it wasn't going to get done right. So I look back on it all, and I know people might find that strange that I use success as our greatest challenge. It was the speed at which we succeeded without allowing us the time to let the firm mature a bit along the way. So we were out of the gate doing a hundred yard sprint when we were really should be running a mile, you know, slow at first and come on at the end. So in any case, that's, uh, that's another take on things. Nunzio, what would you feel has been the secret to hiring or the lessons you've learned about hiring the right people? When we meet people, we don't hire the most talented. Always. We hire the full, as much of the package that we're looking for. We care about our culture. Mark talked about that a moment ago in terms of the quality of the people, the integrity. The we, we look for talent, enthusiasm, attitude, and ambition. The want to do great things. Not we we're not looking for people that want a job. We want a people that want to come along for a ride and do things that they aren't ready for, that will define them and change the way they look at themselves as a professional for years to come. Highly active, highly engaged, highly motivated, and everybody's voice matters in our firm. We're too small not to. Like Mark says, everybody participates and we're a family. So, um, so you know, the one thing we haven't said is our firm is also unique in the sense of what we do. We we and what we offer our we only do the design piece of architecture. We don't do all the technical drawings. We don't do all the big heavy lifting in CA. We don't want to be a firm that's kind of good at all phases. We want to be a, the very best, the greatest design firm at design. And then we can couple and team ourselves with firms that bring the technical. Uh, man and the manpower and the staff and the know how to, you know, deliver a monster project or or even a small, highly intricate project. We believe we want to hone our skills and be the very best at design. 
and let the others that want to be robust and and very you know uh, significant and technical delivery and material knowledge of connect. Let, let these guys have their moment, but we're focused on design. Design is our our backbone. Design is the future. Design is where value lies. Not the, not in the production aspect. So, Mark, I don't know if you want to add to that. You know, actually, I I want to I wanted you to describe a little bit um, about the gap that you saw in our profession. Um, I wasn't around for this period of architecture, but twenty five years ago, oh, there was yeah. um, a, a a collection of fantastic architecture firms that focused on very specific different building types. It wasn't a there were large firms, but there wasn't um, so many large firms that did a little bit of everything. It was a lot of smaller firms that focused on great on a particular building type that was, um, and they were experts in that building type. So, why don't you go ahead and, and describe? Yeah, a what Mark's about alluding to is back about or, uh, what Mark's alluding to is about twenty twenty five years ago. Collection specifically, and I'll, and I'll address hospitality. I can speak to spo- sports and other aspects of architecture, but in hospitality, there were a collection of highly tuned, focused, small design boutique firms that only did one building type. They didn't, on occasion, they would dabble in some, but their bread and butter, the everyday is understand the how to put together a hotel, a convention center hotel, a spa hotel, a resort, a meeting, you know, it just every building is a different time. So uh, there were firms out there that were focused on them. Most of them were 40 people or less. Today, every one of those firms is gone. They have been purchased, merged with, uh, dissolved, eaten up by larger firms. And what that ha- what happens is that knowledge, that focused, intense knowledge is filtered across firms of two, three, four, a thousand people, and it dilutes itself. There's no center of gravity. There's no core. There's no soul. And then we get firms doing hotels and resorts by accident because they have a resume, but they have people on these projects that have never done these types of buildings or never been to a hundred resorts or 82 lifestyle hotels in New York. They haven't even, they don't even know really what they're doing. That's what's happened to our industry. So what what we decided, and not me, but Mark and I decided we're gonna go against the grain. We're gonna we're gonna swim against the surf and bring back a highly focused, dedicated, committed firm built around people in this industry that have done hotels all over the world and bring extraordinary experience. So what we've created in this short period of time is a 30 person design firm that only does the design and some of the interiors associated with these buildings. If we were a full fledged firm already, we'd be over a hundred people doing all the production and all the CA. And that's, that that's significant when you think about the short period of time we've been in business. So uh, we like our positioning. We like what we do. We like how we're focused and two point. When we stand up in, a, in front of a client, we talk about our work. I love when Mark will stand up and talk about lifestyle hotels in New York. And he and some of our young people, we send all over the country to spend two, three days just Visiting hotels that we have not done, looking at them in New York, you can go through 40 or 50 lifestyle hotels, LA, in Miami. When you come back with that collection of knowledge and photographs, you become the scholar of that building type. More than the people that think they know what's going on, you actually know more than anybody. And so when we get up in front of a client, whether it's a 22 room hotel in resort in Nicaragua or 800 room hotel in Fort Lauderdale. Our word is built on the chassis of knowledge and it, we can recite buildings that, that actually support 
our position. So it's, it's really, I, I'm excited about it. I, I haven't lost any altitude at all. I probably gained it. And uh, it's, it's really been a lot of fun. MJ, don't you agree? Absolutely. And in Enoch, we've actually um, already seen great, great benefits to the, to the kind of position we've had. What's, what's interesting is we've talked about excellence in design and, you know, design, although most people think of it on a, on a surface level, we, we bring value in design also to the way a hotel comes together. It, it's important to our clients that we are experts in the hotel business so we can get them down the road quicker and better and faster than most people that have never designed a hotel in their life. And we've actually had um, clients come to us that are second and third generation developers in their family who have never done a hotel before. And their fathers or their grandfathers have said, go seek out Nunzio, go seek out Mr. DeSantis, and he will lead you down the path to get you to, to help you design a hotel that will be successful. And I think that brand value that comes with um, my dad's name and ultimately my last name is something that he's worked very hard over the years to develop and something that we're trying to fold into this company um, to, to deliver excellence, not only from an exterior design, but also from the performance of the hotel standpoint. So um, we're very proud of that. And, and we, we kind of, that's where we're trying to head. Nunzio, I'm curious, as, as we've gone through this interview, I've heard that relationships are very important to you, value them highly. And as I heard Mark give the last answer, he spoke very highly about how your name has become something because of that, whatever it is that you've established. I'd like to know what has been, what do you think has been the key in you developing that trust and your relationship network that has been really the backbone of what you're doing today? Well, I think that really defines it you know, success. So I'm glad you're asking the question. I don't think our clients see us as people that design buildings. They know we're going to do that. And they know we're, they're coming for us and they to us and they expect a, a, a beautiful building, whether it's forward thinking or historically held to precedent. They know we're going to give them a great building, but they look at us also as an extension of their advisors, they, people, I, I'm not interested in just designing another building. I'm interested in having a long-term relationship with people that, and helping them guide them how they spend their money, where they spend it, how fruitless so many buildings you walk into and just see money, places that no one benefits, nor the guest experiences. So what I, I try to do is be extraordinarily honest. The client may not always like what I have to say, but they know I'm saying it because I'm concerned about something or it's important. And I think there's something about integrity and the notion that you see that you are an investment, that you are investing in the project in ways that the client's not even investing. We're investing our time to build something with these wonderful people, these clients that are from different parts of the world, and they need our expertise. They, they need to know how the building systems work, where, how you break down a building, how you take a program from an opera, a third, a third party operator, and how you, how you edit it in such a way that it's, it creates experience along the way that is more than, you know, than the sum of the parts. It's uh, so, our clients look to us beyond just an owner architect relationship. We. Last night we were at dinner in Santa Fe and one of my clients that I started working with in 1999 said it's some incredibly emotionally wonderful things. And he said, um, and he acknowledged that what I have been in his life is far beyond the architect, but an advisor, a friend, a person that is there for him and thick and thin. And we do that with our clients. We become very connected because we're engaged. We're not in this game for money. I don't know if there's another architect out there that will say that so boldly. 
if we get the people thing right, and I've said this for years to my son, my daughter, my wife, my nephew, and all are, if we get the people thing right, we're generally going to do just fine financially, and the architecture is going to be better. So why, why have to stand up there and pound your chest and be arrogant and be the, the know-all? Be, be a client's confidant. Be their, their extension of knowledge. Help them. Be there for them. Do things that go beyond. In the long run, it all pans out. So, I mean, I, I just think relationships are everything we're doing. And I just, I, when, when our firm meets every, we talk about our relationships with our clients. Mark, in front of, I mean, just completely takes over the relationship thing with so many of the clients. And it's just beautiful to watch that we're not constantly looking for ad services and ways to make more money. And we're going to get there. We'll get there when it's right and it's appropriate, but we're in this together. This architecture is hard. The building cycle is hard. We are all humans. We're going to make mistakes. The client's going to make mistakes. The contract, but let me tell you, when Nunzio Mark DeSantis architect makes a mistake, they're going to be right there to fix it. The, the sign of a firm that has the integrity and the longevity and the success is built on never running away or pointing or not holding their hand up, accepting where they fell short, but rather how they come to the table and fix those. So, and how quickly they move. So we're really proud of what we do. And I think, I think relationships are why we are so successful so quickly. Mark, as you've looked from your perspective at the relationships that Nunzio's created over his career, and then also the relationships you've helped to cultivate there. You know, what's your perspective on that secret sauce that that builds those lasting relationships that lead to trust and work? We don't see our our clients necessarily as clients. We we see them as people we're trying to become great friends with. And from the moment, you know. My 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 dad has always kind of uh, led in his own unique way. He's always he's always uh, he's not worried to to uh, mince words or kind of uh, beat around the bush. He's there to be honest and do what's right, and ultimately um, do what's right for the client. And I think the client feels that it's a sense of honesty, it's a sense of reliability, it's um, and it's a sense of caring and. And I think the secret sauce is trying to cut through all the niceties and be honest with who you are and do your best every day and give your clients a hug every once in a while. Make sure they know that you care about them as much as you care about everybody else. So that's, that's what we try to uphold. And I, I think that's, that's the way I, I like to move through life. And I think, I think that's something my, I cherish about my dad and it's something that I, I cherish um, in my relationships with my clients. And that's, that's just how we like, we like to act. So um, yeah, I, I hope that our, our values shine through every day with our clients. And I think that's what's important. We, we may not be right for everybody, but I will tell you one thing. When we get our, our hooks into a client, we quit calling them clients and we call them our friends. And that's how they see us. And when they go to the next project and the one after that, they see us as not something as a consideration, but a must. I, I, I think I think that is, you know, that that is in itself um, a bit of our mantra. Uh, it's it's our character. At the end of the day, if if everything were to stop tomorrow, the one thing I know people will say about us is th- those were really good men. And by the way, they were talented. But they're going to start with they were really good men. Uh, that couldn't be, there couldn't be a, a, a greater compliment. Nunzio, Mark DeSantis, thank you for joining me today on The Business of Architecture. Thank you very much. Thank you. And that is a wrap. As a podcast listener, I'd like to invite you to two free online educational seminars for firm owners. The first teaches you how to structure your firm to avoid the overwhelm and fires that plague so many firm owners. If you're ready to move from overwhelmed operator to excited owner, visit businessofarchitecture.com forward slash 
freedom webinar to access this free online training. The second seminar you can access shows you how to attract your ideal clients to your firm consistently day in and day out. Go to architectwebinar.com to access this training. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.